There's nothing quite like a beautiful woman who inspires fear, commands respect, and might just kill you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 hottest female movie villains of all time. For this list, we're looking at the sexiest female antagonist and evildoers from throughout the history of cinema. From mortal women with malicious intent to various supernatural beings, we'll be considering all types of female villains, as long as they bring that double threat of striking good looks and evil ways. There is a spoiler alert in effect here. Number 20. Hela, Thor Ragnarok For all its success, the MCU is not perfect, and one of the most frequently cited criticisms is that its first few phases had a real villain problem. The baddies often seemed paper thin, but Hela is squarely part of the solution rather than the problem. Darling, you have no idea what's possible. Kate Blanchett's performance drew favorable comparisons to Disney's greatest magical villains, including Maleficent and Chernabog. She plays the goddess of death and succeeds in making this larger-than-life character feel like flesh and blood. I'm not a queen or a monster. I'm the goddess of death. Hela relishes every murder and moment of destruction, and her zeal is intoxicating. Of course, it doesn't hurt that Kate Blanchett is one of her generation's great beauties. Many fans would gladly watch Hela strut down the Bifrost all day, despite a potentially fatal outcome. Whatever game you're playing, it won't work. You can't defeat me. Number 19, Catherine Mertoy, Cruel Intentions. In the late 90s, Sarah Michelle Gellar was one of the most beloved and iconic heroes of the small screen. And shall we toast to? To my triumph. Buffy Summers was a badass teenage protagonist of a caliber that few could rival. As such, it was a huge shock to the system when in 1999 she flipped the script and played the villain in this hypersexualized teen drama. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Catherine Mertoy most definitely is not. Eat me, Sebastian. It's all right for guys like you in court to f everyone, but when I do it, I get dumped for innocent little twits like Cecile. God forbid I exude confidence and enjoy sex. She wields her sex appeal with such confidence and in overtly manipulative ways that it's enough to make anyone weak in the knees. You know that she's got an ulterior motive, most likely a desire to destroy you for her own amusement, but only the strongest of resolves can resist her charms. So I assume you've come here to make some arrangements, but unfortunately, I don't f losers. Number 18, Madison Lee, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. This sequel might not have had quite the same cultural impact as its predecessor, but Madison Lee is reason enough to keep us coming back. Madison Lee? Natalie Cook? Played by Demi Moore, who was 40 years old at the time, Lee is an absolute bombshell, and the camera isn't shy about lingering on her jaw dropping physique. Whether she's walking out of the ocean in a tiny bikini or brandishing a gun in lingerie and a robe, she is an absolute jaw-dropper. Playing the character with a controlled intensity, Moore imbues Lee with an intense physicality. Whatever context or space she finds herself in, she absolutely commands the room. She slays, and we mean that in more ways than one. The premiere should be a blast. <laughs> Number 17, Mystique, the X-Men franchise. Jennifer Lawrence is excellent as Mystique, and certainly easy on the eyes. But in terms of both villainy and raw sex appeal, her predecessor, Rebecca Romaine, has got her beat. The model-turned-actress feels like a version of Mystique who walked right off of a comic book panel. Her legginess and slender but muscular physique verges on the cusp of supernatural. You know, people like you are the reason I was afraid to go to school as a child. What makes her such an alluring villain is the way she moves. From her walk to her distinctive combat style, everything is graceful in a way that never fails to convey an implied lethality. Mystique can go from slow and seductive to a lightning-quick assault in the blink of an eye. And by the time you realize what she's done, you're probably already dead. Number 16, Dr. Julia Harris, Horrible Bosses and Horrible Bosses 2. 
This might seem like a silly distinction to make in a list about female villains, but even compared to her competition today, Dr. Julia Harris is crazy. You're gonna give me that dong, Dale. This film centers around three friends who, all being dissatisfied with the treatment they receive at work, come up with a plot to kill each other's bosses. Each of these employers is awful in their own right, but Julia's complex and never-ending harassment strategies are next level. You just continue to surprise me, you dirty, dirty little man. The problem is, while the character is absolutely twisted, she's played in both the original and the sequel by sex symbol Jennifer Aniston. So the audience is forced into an awkward predicament of being repulsed by her actions, but nonetheless left drooling over her every sexually charged move. Nice to have some new fresh blood in the group. Appreciate it. Fresh, cute blood. Hey. Number 15, Syl, Species. We've discussed gods and mutants, but this is our first real foray into the realm of the overtly weird. <laughs> So let's just go ahead and clarify that Syl is hot in her human form. We are every bit as terrified of her alien looks as we should be, and we hope that you are too. Syl is an extraterrestrial human hybrid who's driven solely by her desire to breed with human men and create more of her kind. Don't go. Please. I want a baby. What? Excuse me? Step one foot out of line, however, and you are going to die a gruesome death. Strangling with nipple tentacles, puncturing your skull with her tongue, Syl has many tricks up her sleeve. And yet, for all her lethal qualities, it's almost impossible to deny the appeal of this sexually overcharged predator. Where's a good place to find a man? Well, there's plenty of guys at the end around the corner. It's a club. Do you want to have any trouble meeting somebody there? Number 14, Ava Lord, Sin City, a dame to kill for. In this 2014 sequel, Ava Green plays the titular Dame to Kill For. A master manipulator and the archetypal man-eater, she's an absolute knockout who knows all too well the effect that she has on the opposite sex. I must still mean something to you. You came here, you must still care. Sure. You called and I came running. You still got that much of a hold on me, maybe you always will, but I got no reason at all to be nice to you. Many of the villains on our list today bring a combination of sexuality and lethality, but it could be said that in Ava Lord's case, her beauty is her greatest weapon. She's often described as a goddess, and unfortunately, she is not a benevolent one. Sex always made you stupid, ready to believe anything. <laughs> You've just made me a very rich woman. Ava Lord is played by Ava Green, who played a similarly sexy but lethal villain in 300 Rise of an Empire. As Xerxes' naval commander, Artemisia is driven primarily by her love of war, but she seems to find many similarities between combat and sex. If I kissed you now, Dwight, would you still believe it was love? <sighs> Number 13, Oren Ishii, Kill Bill, Volume 1. Beautiful but deadly has rarely applied quite as well as it does to Oren Ishii. The queen of the Tokyo underground, Oren is one of Bill's deadly viper assassination squad. As your leader, I encourage you from time to time, and always in a respectful manner, to question my logic. If you're unconvinced a particular plan of action I've decided is the wisest, tell me so. But allow me to convince you, and I promise you right here and now, no subject will ever be taboo. Except, of course, a subject that was just under discussion. And it could be argued that she's one of the more skilled combatants of the group. Played by the always stunning Lucy Liu, this killer with the codename Cottonmouth is among the most graceful and elegant villains on our list today. She doesn't generally use her beauty or sexuality as a weapon, instead relying on her prowess with a blade. Expert swordswoman though she might be, Oren ultimately loses her head to the bride. But before her blood hit the snow, she made quite the impression on viewers. <laughs> Number 12, Gazelle, Kingsman, The Secret Service. Played by the stunning actress, model, and dancer Sofia Butella, Gazelle is truly a one of a kind villain. If he did, that tends to happen when you shoot someone in the head. Her lower legs have been replaced with razor sharp bladed prosthetics. Artificially enhanced villains are nothing new, but rarely are they allowed to be notable in appearance and considered traditionally good-looking, which is what makes Gazelle such a refreshing character. 
She is gorgeous, composed, and the very definition of deadly. It's also worth noting that because her weapons of choice are so unique, it makes her very difficult to fight. The average person, or secret agent for that matter, has never trained for battle against someone with blades for feet. Gazelle is truly a villain for the ages. Understood. Number 11, Harley Quinn, Suicide Squad. Okay, so given her extreme popularity, like other breakout villains, Harley has slowly but surely evolved into more of an anti-hero. My heart scares you and a gun doesn't do it! But regardless of her recent film and increasingly moral decisions in the comics, Harley Quinn has historically landed closer to villain on the good versus evil paradigm. She has been party to some nasty plots alongside Mr. J. And in Suicide Squad, she is one of the bad guys. She even said so herself. We're bad guys, it's what we do. Sex appeal is a big part of Harley Quinn's identity in the movie, both in terms of outfits and how she interacts with men, including guards. Margot Robbie really leans into the character's well-documented craziness, and it all makes her an absolute pleasure to watch. What? Number 10, Evil Jill Valentine, The Resident Evil Franchise. Jill Valentine arguably isn't the most well-developed or nuanced character on our list today, but with that being said, there's just something incredibly appealing about a character transforming into the dark version of themselves. You are gonna be in for the fight of your lives. It's the classic Sandy from Grease move, and really, Few such transitions are as overtly sexy as that of evil Jill Valentine in the later installments of this long-running video game franchise. Once a resistance member and ally to Alice, Jill Valentine falls under the control of Umbrella. And from that point on, the brainwashed version of Jill is all skin-tight outfits, evil smirks, and shoot to kill. She's cruel and utterly without mercy, a true sadist. And like many female video game villains, she is notably easy on the eyes. Number 9, TX Terminatrix, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Is she Arnie? No, but the villainous Terminator in the third installment of this popular franchise knows how to turn heads in her own right. The filmmakers were clearly going for the blonde bombshell angle when developing this character, and the film doesn't shy away from highlighting TX's killer assets. Whether she's driving a car or getting repeatedly hit in the face by the OG Terminator, TX always has the same confident look on her face. She is unflappable. More than just a pretty face, though, actress Kristana Loken really got in shape for the role, packing on muscle in order to live up to the physicality that one expects from a Terminator. Busty, brawny, and absolutely deadly, the Terminatrix is the whole villainous package. <laughs> Number 8. The Devil Bedazzled The Devil has taken on many forms over the years across various media, but few iterations of the biblical root of all evil have made quite as big an impression as the one we get in Bedazzled. I think you're hot. Baby, you have no idea. English bombshell Elizabeth Hurley plays the devil, and the outfits she wears are downright torture for every person watching. In exchange for his soul, the devil offers to give Brendan Fraser's geeky Elliot Richards seven wishes. Women aren't really attracted to wealth and power. They're not? No, of course not. They couldn't give a fig for all that rubbish. What you need to figure out is what she does want in a man. All he really wants, however, is to be with his work crush, Allison. 
and so he repeatedly tries to make this a reality while the devil finds twisted ways to mess it up. Well, I hate to put a big rush on this, but there is a time limit. Reach a contract. But honestly, considering how drop-dead gorgeous the devil is, we're kind of surprised he can think of anyone but Lucifer herself. I know, it's fun, isn't it? Number 7. Emma Frost, X-Men First Class Back to the X-Men, or is that triple X? For decades, Emma Frost has been one of the most scantily clad and explicitly sexual characters in all of Marvel Comics. You're thinking of running, hiding. We'd find you, Henry. There's not a fortress in the world that could keep us out. And when she made her big screen debut in 2011's X-Men First Class, well, they did the source material proud. She's a supporting villain, but the casting of January Jones ensures that all eyes are on her every time she appears on screen. Pathetic. Like her comic book counterpart, this version of Emma Frost is only too happy to use her sexuality as a tool or weapon to reach her goals. Though, considering she's also an incredibly powerful telepath, she needn't actually get physical. Add to that her diamond skin, and Emma Frost is one beauty you do not want to mess with. You can stop trying to read my mind, sugar. <laughs> You're never going to get anything from me while I'm like this. Number 6. Catwoman, Batman Returns I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. Can you say meow? Played by Michelle Pfeiffer, this classic Batman villain became the gold standard by which all sexy supervillains are judged with the release of this 1992 sequel. Her skin-tight outfit required the actress to use talcum powder to get it on. Suffice it to say, that shiny black number leaves nothing to the imagination. I just love a big strong man who's not afraid to show it with someone half his size. Be gentle, it's my first time. While Pfeiffer's Catwoman could have made this list based on looks alone, it's the performance that really earns her such high marks. Pfeiffer really channels the character's slinky feline sexuality, and the end result is enough to drive a viewer barking or meowing mad. The performance is utterly captivating, but also fierce and commanding. Intelligent, witty, and gorgeous, this Catwoman earns her status as a film icon. It's chilly in here. I'll warm you. Down, Oswald. We need to talk. Number 5. Santanico Pandemonium – From Dusk Till Dawn Her name is certainly a mouthful, but for a chance to get close to her, we suspect you'll figure it out. Auntie, look out! So, while the provocative outfits and Selma Hayek's surreal figure might seem tempting, this lap dance could very well be your last. But hey, given the raw sexual energy infused into Hayek's every move in the role, you might not be able to resist her seduction. Word to the wise, though, it's probably best to avoid women who wear snakes. Seems like a villainous red flag. Number 4. Xenia on a top. Goldeneye. You don't need the gun, Commander. That depends on your definition of safe sex. The James Bond franchise isn't exactly lacking for smoking hot female characters, be they villains, allies, or damsels in distress. But of the many Bond girls who have graced the screen over the years, few have inspired repeat viewings quite like Xenia on a top. Played by Fomka Jansen, this suggestively named henchwoman takes pleasure in two things – pleasure and murder, preferably at the same time. How do you take it? Straight up, with a twist. She's described as a sadist, and honestly, one look at her is enough to tell you that this dark-haired, sultry beauty has villainous intent. Her preferred method of murder is to crush men between her thighs. We know what you're thinking, but that's not what she has in mind. I like a woman who enjoys pulling rank. Nice to meet you, Mr. Bond. Number 3. Amy Elliott Dunn – Gone Girl Rosamund Pike is no stranger to playing deadly but drop-dead gorgeous women. Need a reminder? How about her head-turning performance in Die Another Day? It was so good of you to bring your gun to bed with us. As Miranda Frost, she's a force to be reckoned with, be it in bed or with a sword in her hand. But it's Pike's performance in Gone Girl that really earns her a spot on the podium. Burn it just the right amount. Make sure the cops will find it. As Amy Dunn, she's utterly captivating. She's not just beautiful, but absolutely magnetic. The sort of woman who everyone at the party wants to talk to. 
Behind that charming, gorgeous exterior, however, is a master manipulator with a history of destroying lives. So Nick, how does it feel to have your wife back? <clears throat> Number two, Jennifer Check, Jennifer's Body. Though her acting resume is rather hit or miss, there's no denying that Megan Fox is a sex symbol. Come on, Needy. I promised Chip that I would hang out with him tonight. Boo, cross out Needy. What time is the show? We'll pick up at 8.30. She's arguably best known for her more heroic roles, like those she played in the Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchises. But in this 2009 horror comedy, she got to embrace her darker side and really got some blood on her hands. No! No! Leaning into the demonic possession of her character, Megan is at her sexiest and most satanically seductive. Jennifer Check is essentially a Black Widow spider in human form, a deadly hunter who seduces unsuspecting men only to kill them in gruesome fashion. But even armed with that knowledge, we bet some people would still go for it. I thought you only murdered boys. I go both ways. All I can really say about this list is be careful. Just because she's hot does not mean she won't murder you. Anyway, number one is iconic especially for one particular scene, so let's run through some honorable mentions and then we'll name our hottest female movie villain of all time. Where are those keys, Rose? You know I can't give you the keys, right, babe? Yeah, you could be a tight end! Master, would thou dance with me? Before the sun sets on her 16th birthday, she will prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and fall into a sleep like death. A sleep from which she will never awaken. Hi there. And you are... Poison. Poison Ivy. They're all alive. Merci, Danielle. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Catherine Trammell, Basic Instinct. You know I don't wear any underwear, don't you, Nick? We've seen so many female villains on film in the years since this movie came out. And many of them have been far more overtly sexualized than Catherine Trammell. But it takes more than skimpy outfits, provocative framing, and malicious intent to make for an iconic femme fatale. In this erotic thriller, Sharon Stone plays a writer who is carnal in every sense of the word. She's driven by equal parts lust and bloodlust. She oozes dangerous sexuality. Far more than just eye candy, though, Sharon Stone delivers an arresting performance. One that makes Catherine Trammell not just one of the sexiest villains in film history, but among the most iconic psycho killers to ever grace the screen. What about Roxy? Is she more fun? <laughs> Would you like her to join us sometime? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.